Today, I wanted to clean up a common misconception that keeps being the center of attention when it comes to the Dark Urge. Some people think that there is no reason to play as a custom character, your Tef, so to speak, because the Dark Urge is basically him with extra content. Well, I think people will be quite surprised, if not disappointed, if they will approach the game thinking that way. Hello everyone, before we begin I just wanted to say that in no way am I encouraging or discouraging you from playing the Dark Urge. I think either choice will be a very exciting playthrough and I'll be doing one myself. My discussion today is just an attempt to prepare some of you that were possibly convinced that there is absolutely no reason to play as a custom character with the Dark Urge available. So Larian has said multiple times that playing as the Urge will be a dark and bloody path. Yes, you can try to be the good guy and resist the urges, but it will get progressively harder as you explore the game. It was actually soft confirmed on Jesse Cox's stream yesterday when he was talking to Sven Finkel about the Dark Urge, how you will get harder and harder ability checks as you try to resist your urges. So let's listen to it. I was talking with Sven about it, and we were talking about um, the Dark Urge and how it works, because my in theory... Dark Urge is an option you have, right? It doesn't seem to do anything. And I was asking him, I was like, all right, so if I was a good guy paladin, for example, and I had Dark Urge, would it really matter? Could I just still be a good guy paladin? He was saying that the more you reject it, the more later on it will basically roll intimidation checks against you to force you to do it. So basically, the longer you try to withhold the Dark Urge, the more it will try to mess with you. And I was like... So as you can see, you will have way different outcomes between playing your custom character and the Dark Urge. Later on, Jesse was also talking how you can, small spoiler alert, even kill your romance partner while they're sleeping or at the very least think about it while having only blood on your mind. We actually saw this on the panel from Hell Showcase. A lot of people seem to think that the urge is fully controllable, but you will most definitely do some cruel things you will have no control over. For example, the poor, poor squirrel that I refuse to show again because I'm very sensitive for animals. There might be a check at full release to avoid the outcome or simply talk to the squirrel as another companion, but who knows? And even if you resist it, it might bite you in the ass later when you're gonna come to that NPC that you really don't want to kill and the urge will take over or you will have to pass, let's say, a DC-30 wisdom save to not kill your quest giver. Not to mention the bodies that will be showing up in your camp and you will have to either bury them or tell your companions about it. You have to live with the consequences and not knowing what you might do next and either postpone your fate or embrace it. It's not a pretty character and it isn't your custom character replacement, despite some people thinking that it might be. However, some checks you will definitely be able to resist, like in the showcase with potentially biting Gale's hand off so the major events like recruiting new companions will have at the very least a check so you can resist your dark urges. But the saving throws for these could get harder as the game progresses and it could get annoying having to keep using that inspiration die or saves coming every time you fail to resist killing someone. The option will be there in most cases but it's still very much a chaotic playthrough. Don't think you will be able to resist literally everything as some things will go beyond your control. Now it could be possible and it is implied that you could reset those urges. For example, if you go a long time with resisting the urge, you can then give in on the next opportunity which will make your checks easier for a given time after that. This is of course just my theory and it doesn't have to play out like that, but it is something to consider and sadly or not, there probably will be optimized dark urge playthroughs from a mechanical standpoint as to when it is best to give in to those urges and when to resist. But on the first playthrough, I hope people will experience it for themselves so it's more natural and fun. Despite all that, I'm not saying you should not play as the Dark Urge, even on your first playthrough if you want. Just be ready to deal with the consequences. Personally, I can't wait to play as a paladin that tries to do everything in his power to resist these dark temptations, but most likely failing somewhere along the way, especially since it is implied that the checks get harder and harder the more you try to resist, which honestly sounds super exciting, but still, it is not a TEF plus playthrough or so to speak. I won't be surprised if you will also miss out on some conversations because they will be overshadowed by your urges. You will probably get less interactions about your chosen race, class or background because the conversation can railroad into the dark urge thoughts of killing whoever you're speaking with fairly quickly. Of course not all conversations will go like that, but the important ones you care about pretty darn well might. 
The best way to describe Dark Urge for me is like Dexter from the TV show with his dark passenger that sometimes just takes over or being a thirsty vampire or drug addict that just has to give in from time to time to satisfy his urge. Or think of the Dark Knight, sometimes you will be more violent than you want to be, or it's like drowning or suffocating and you will need that air eventually. So in conclusion, if you want a playthrough where you will be tested and want to discover the plot of the potential new ball spawn that plays homage to the older Baldur Gates titles, then go for it. Just remember that your path will be predetermined more than a custom character ever will be and some things will have to play out in order to progress the story. There will be multiple ways to approach it for sure, but sometimes shit happens and you won't have control over it. It will be a very exciting playthrough and I can't wait to try it, but it should not be for everyone, especially not on the first playthrough if you want to experience your own custom fantasy. I made this video for you to just be wary of who you're picking because you might end up with something different than a strictly better choice with more options and more exciting gameplay. It will be harder and different for sure, more predetermined but still tons of fun. So decide for yourself and let me know what you're picking on your first playthrough and what is your opinion on the topic I would love to see you in the comments. Thank you so so much for watching my videos. Remember that everyone has their own opinion and let's keep the conversation civil in the comments. Visit me on my live streams where we can discuss the topic and others related to Baldur's Gate 3 even further and I'll see you again very soon.